OK, yeah, let's uh, move on to uh, five minutes. OK, I can draw the circuit, and I can uh, just tell you what it does and show you that it does do what I tell, say it does. And we'll do a derivation of this um, on Monday. I'll have to, yeah, yeah, we'll do the derivation of this on Monday. Um, so this is what we call LC circuit. And for the math that we are going to work out on Monday, we will be considering this circuit, capacitor, just to hook up to inductor. Now, this obviously won't do anything interesting, just by itself, right? So I have to charge it up. I have to get it started somehow. So um, I have to charge up this capacitor to start out with. So that is plus Q naught and minus Q naught. And at time equals zero, everything is connected and starts to flow. And actually, here's the way you can imagine it. It's the same thing that we did before, except I rotated around a little bit. So you can imagine that, all right, there's going to be a register here, and register battery here. And when I have this battery of voltage V0, call this point A, uh, point B, and another switch here again. I imagine connecting this switch to A. This battery applies a voltage difference. So the, the charging, it's going to look a little bit complicated because of this inductor. But one thing I can say is when I'm done charging, so that there's no more current flowing through the, this whole thing, then the voltage drop across this two will be zero. Current is at zero and not changing. So once this is all charged up, then I'm going to, uh, with zero current, I'm going to flip this over to B. And what I would look at is what happens once this flips over to B. And I'll tell you what happens. Um, the circuit oscillates. So uh, the behavior of the circuit will be this. So this, uh, the amount, the charge here, uh, it will start to flow. So um, because of this charge separation, there's a voltage difference. That voltage difference is going to drive current through the circuit. More precisely, it actually drives a rate of change of current through the inductor. Because this voltage difference is this voltage difference. So current increases from zero. Now, around the time when this discharges completely, when this, the charge only goes to zero, what you are going to have is you are going to have maximum current on the inductor. And it won't stop there. Because, well, if you have current, it will continue to flow, right? Which means at some point later, the charge on the capacitor will be reversed. You will have positive Q here and minus Q here. So that will start creating voltage that will oppose the flow of current. So that will start decreasing the current. And um, at some point, you are going to reach maximum charge here and zero current. Then there's still voltage difference, so there'll be current being pushed back again, and then this will repeat over and over, ideally forever. You can look at it as energy stored on the capacitor, going to energy stored in the inductor, back to energy stored on capacitor, back to inductor, and so on. In real world, the reason it would stop is for the same reason any motion stops, because of resistance, because of friction. So, um, here, I can create a small circuit version of that that kind of illustrates it. So this is the way I will have it hooked up. So I have my inductor here. And the value of the capacitor, I was just playing with it before class. And the one that I found that works is this is a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. It's a pretty small capacitor. I'm going to put this in series with my inductor. And I'm going to drive a square wave across this thing. Um, yeah, square wave sounds right. And I want to be measuring voltage across the capacitor, because that will give me the amount of charge on the capacitor directly, better than anything. So once again, ignore um, what you see on the driving thing. I uh, think this will be actually more interesting, yeah. So uh, I need to set up the time scale. So that I, I don't need to be on such a high frequency anymore. Oh, I think this is not good enough. Um, all right. 
Alright. Um, okay. So um, uh, let me trigger on the uh, falling slope. So uh, when you look at this uh, uh, curve, let me just explain what it is so that you can relate it to what I was just describing. Um, so this is the voltage of the, uh, the power supply. That's the moment before I triggered it, it was uh, on. So uh, oops, it was on at uh, this value. So the battery was charging the capacitor inductor circuit, and then it suddenly dropped to zero. Uh, connecting it you know, into the form that I put there. And what you see oscillating here, that's the voltage across the capacitor. That's, uh, the, um, that's the amount of charge on the capacitor. And you see that it oscillates. Let me zoom in in the time a little bit. All right, so um, you, you do start out with, let's see, you do start out with the maximum amount of charge on the capacitor. It discharges, but when it reaches zero, it doesn't stop because the current continues to flow through the resistor. It gets negatively charged. And then, uh, well, when it's maximally charged, then the current flows back through the, uh, back through the inductor again. And then when it completely discharges, it doesn't stop, keeps on going. And what, kind, what does this remind you of? Motion of a mass on a spring, right? Like if you had, mass on a spring, and you, know, you charge up this system, you pull it down a little bit, and when you let go, when the potential energy goes to zero, it doesn't stop because the energy went to kinetic energy. That makes it keep on pushing through. So it goes through the, another potential energy maximum, comes back, and um, there's actually a perfect analogy you can draw between this kind of LR LC circuit and this mechanical system. Um, and I guess I'll just leave it there. So on Monday, we will actually go through the math for this uh, circuit and show that it does show um, oscillating behavior that you already saw. Um.